What's up guys? It's time to continue with the sizing exercise. We're going to do a PFR, plug flow reactor. Once again, let me draw you the diagram. You have an inlet, you have a conversion, and as they pass by, they go out and yeah, they react. So example number two of chapter two is in Scott Fogler's book, Elements of Chemical Reaction Engineering. They describe you a, well, this is the reaction A turns into B, and you're going to have it in a PFR. They give you this flow rate. So F of A initial is that number. Okay. The first thing you want to know, or the first thing they ask you is to first use the integration formula given in this appendix, which I found boring. I always use the trapezoidal rule, narrow fails, you can choose whatever uh, interval you want, but okay, I, I just did it so you can see it, but I also did it on the trapezoidal rule so you can compare. Okay, and they tell you to calculate the 80%. Now, once you got that, please go to this figure and graph the area you will have to have so you get the volume for this conversion. And finally, but not least, and I actually like this letter C because you will need to make a qualitative sketch of the conversion versus one, the rate of reaction and two, the volume. So let's go here. They give you this data, which is very common. You do an example or experiment in chemistry lab and you get these moles per, you got the fixed volume. Yes, you got it because you got the speaker. You got the total volume. You are counting time with a chronometer so that's also not a problem and the quantity well that's the real problem but you can do it by analytical chemistry or a there are many ways to measure concentration okay and the conversion well that's a calculation you do so this is the calculation and this is the measurement in the lab we're going to use it later on okay so let's continue with letter a First use one of the integration formulas in this appendix and determine the volume needed to achieve 80% conversion. So the first thing I'm telling you we're going to use is the inverse of this. So I just divided by, or at least one divided by this value gives me this. So all this divided or inverse it and you will get these values. Okay. We're going to see why, why do we do this? Because you can see that I have this formula here and you know I got this conversion and you know that the area under this will give you the volume per unit mole. So, previously they told about the five point rules, which is a good rule, but it's a little bit complex. I actually don't know it. I need to check it in Wikipedia or read it in the book or in the appendix. It's about, first of all, you got to find equal, uh, let's say, differences. So if you got, let's go back here. If we got, let me choose a delta x, uh, let's say it's 0.2, I will have this value here. This value goes away because of the process. It will no never allow me. Now 2 and 4, it's OK. 4 and 6 is OK. 6 and 7 is not OK. I need to go to 8. So this value goes away. So just because I use this uh, equation or this method, I just throw away two values of valuable data. So imagine, I know that maybe you have some chemists doing it, so it's okay. But imagine you were doing that, you will say like, what the hell? Why do I need to like throw away this data? And for the other side, trapezoidal rules takes into consideration every single of this data. So you will have this and you will have this range and this range and this range and this range and this range. Yes, of course, it's a little bit more complicated because you need to calculate every single rectangle or trapezoid, but it's totally worth it because it's not that difficult and it's more exact and you use all the data. So I'm going to do both processes because this is in the book and this is what I will do as an engineer if I were to choose that so this formula is just data data times 4, data times 2, data times 4 data 
add all this data, all these circles, and multiply it by the difference or the range divided by three. A little bit crazy, but okay, it's just you just need to find the data. If you have no idea what we're talking about, please go to your numerical methods classes because this is very typical how to calculate uh, the area under a curve when you do not have a function, when you have actually just data. So you have this set of numbers, you can still calculate the area. You don't need to have a function. Now, I'm going to do it first by trapezoidal rule, which is my favorite method. It says that the area under that curve is essentially the addition of every trapezoid. Okay? And let's say that there are, I'm going to explain it very fast, but I love it because they're, let's say, like converting this trapezoid to a, let's say the average will be around here. Okay, so they're transforming into a rectangle. That's why there's two, you're having the average. So this is the height of my rectangle. And this, the base is this base. So let's do that. I'm going to choose my range. I choose the same range so they don't tell me that it's more precise because you use the different range or more ranges. So I use 0 to 0.1. Look, I'm still throwing away 0.1, but it's just because I want to compare. So 0.2 with 0.3, uh, 0.4 with 0.6, and 0.6 with 0.8. Look that I stop at 0.8 because that's what I want, 80%. Why would I go to 100% if I'm not asked to? Now, what's next? Uh, yeah, this is the interval. In this case, the interval is the same, but what happens if you have different intervals? Well, you will have to point, point 0.1 and point 0.3 and the, the interval you have. And what then next, we're going to calculate our heights, different heights. So H1 and H2, what is this? We're going to go back. And is essentially this value, and then these values, and I'm averaging these values. So I take the average of these guys, and yes, I got them one average, two average, three average, four averages. I got this, but what does that tell me? That tells me nothing. I need to still multiply this base times the height, will give me the area of that single trapezoid, but I don't want that single trapezoid. So, uh, for instance, let's say this is 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, I got that, but I don't want individual areas, I want the total area. So what do you do? Well, we just add them up, and I got my total area under the, the curve here. So I got this area, which is what I wanted. What's that area? That area is essentially the volume. But there's one trick. We just did it in one mole. And the thing here is we are not feeding one mole, we are feeding 0.4 moles. So we will need to fix that. That's very easy, just multiply by 0.4. So I got this thing right here and I multiply it by the flow which is 0.4 and it's done. You just multiply this and you get 2.26 cubic meters. Cool, that's with trapezoid method. Now let's use the five point rule that says the book, which is kind of boring. Uh, first of all, we need to set a delta x, which of course will be the same as the one I chose before. Now you need to get all this data. And data here and data there and data here and you keep going. And of course, don't forget to multiply by 4, by 2, and by 4. 4, 2, 4. It's, no, it's 1, 4, 2, 4, 1. So it makes kind of logic. And yeah, I got it. This is 0.2 divided by 3. This is 0.06. Then I add all this data, which once again is the data right here. I use. No, I use this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So look, there's the 20 here, the 8.8, .8, etc. Okay, I got 5.33, which is the area under this curve here. Okay, I got this area. Let's compare it, 6.66 and 6.33. Well, the trapezoid rule is a little bit more than the 
5.ru and yeah once again this is per unit mole but I don't have one mole I have 0.4 moles per second so let me multiply that times this you know that this is per mole so let me take away that mole mole goes away with mole and you get 2.13 and I got 2.26 which essentially is almost the same it's not that much of a difference and where is it? yeah that was letter A so technically the answer will be this one now letter B shade the area of this figure that will give the PFR the volume necessary to achieve 80% conversion so very easy identify the 80% which is here go to the plot intersect with the plotted area and draw all the area here so all the red stuff is the area under the, the curve which is the volume and look the book says it's 2.16 which is near this it's also between these both a little bit more near or near this 5 point rule but yeah it's just about decimals and look we got you I don't think you will remember this and I think it's easier to remember the trapezoidal rule so whatever method you choose you're going to be approximate and let's see this one is also very interesting make a qualitative sketch of the conversion of which is X and the rate of reaction down the length of the volume so X of A versus volume and rate of reaction versus volume once again two plots so probably you're going to be telling me well actually let me explain you a little bit this is what they want they want X here I know it's very range, uh, strange that they have it in the Y axis and they want volume here so that's my X axis is volume and the thing here is you will need to calculate one conversion and then calculate the volume one com you give one conversion and then calculate the volume and it seems a lot but it's not that much look we already have all the data this is exactly the same table I made the only thing I'm doing here is this I'm going to add this one is my first let's say volume and then I add this one and this is my volume and then I add this one and then this is my volume and then I add this one and this is my volume so you can see we end up with the same number which is 80% here but now we got here at 60% 40% and 20% so we got the volume very very fast very cool and probably you haven't even noticed that uh, if you're very good in math you will get why we can add this directly and you get the 40% actually the exercise is that you have the 20% volume and then you add the 40% volume and then you add the 60% volume and then you add the 80% volume and you're done so that's why essentially the problem was already done but remember this is only per one mole we don't want one mole we want 0.4 moles so that's why I'm multiplying these numbers times 0 0.4 0 0.4 0 0.4 and I get this value so what I just got essentially is I got values of X versus values of volume which is what I want look I got the values of X which is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and I got values of V this here so I just need to plot them and yeah one point, one point, one point I made these this lines and you can see the, this is like a shape so what does that say? The more volume you get, the more conversion you get. And at the beginning, the this means that when you add a little bit volume, the conversion goes rapidly growing, but as the which makes sense. But as you get to 100, you will need to add extra volume and extra volume and extra volume. So look the difference. I add I added 50% volume here, and I only get from 80 maybe to 100 percent but 50 percent here look let's say I have this conversion I got 20 percent I add 50 percent and I got almost twice or like 30 percent and I here I got only 20 percent so you can see at the beginning it's very very 
super easy to react and as the reaction goes to completion it starts requiring more volume and more volume which is very typical for reactions and once again rate of reactions I got the volumes here and from this table I just need to literally identify the ones I need which is 0, 0.2, 0.4, 0.6, 0.8 because I got them so let's go and graph so rate of reaction and my volume I just these pink dots represent these here and I just have this and once again let me analyze this this is my rate of uh, reaction Excuse me, negative. and this is my volume so the rate of reaction as the volume increases goes slower so what does that mean? Because indirectly you are getting uh, to a higher conversion, rate of reaction starts getting slower and slower and slower every time you need more volume to react the same quantity. So yeah, we're done with this exercise. It was a little bit uh, long, sorry for that, but it's very important to get every single of these graphs. Where do we get them? If you got problems with this five point rule, check out Wikipedia. You have problems with trapezoid rule, check out Wikipedia or even YouTube. There are many, many videos in which you can find the trapezoid rule. And yeah, once again, thank you for watching, guys. See you in the next video. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.